Microelectronics are made of tiny electrical circuits. Think of a circuit as a circle where electrons flow in a controlled loop. Let's use a few simple batteries and items you'd have around the house to see how an electrical circuit can power a light bulb. Let's learn! Can you figure out how to power a light bulb with just a battery and a strip of aluminum foil? Using these, can you figure out how to light up the bulb? What do you say? I think we should start with the battery and the tin foil. Yeah. Well, we should probably start with the battery. That's the source of energy, right? We hmm. should probably put this on top. The battery has the like electricity stuff, and it goes through the tin foil, and it has to be connected like a circuit. And then probably put the aluminum foil on the bottom. Uh, it's not connected. Connect it then. For the electrical circuit to work, the aluminum foil has to touch one end of the battery while the light bulb touches the other. Here, I'll hold this. Let's put the aluminum foil under the battery. To complete the circuit, we just touch the other end of our aluminum foil to the side of the light. It, it worked. worked. Oh, it works. Well, that was easy. You got it. When the circuit is closed, the electrons can move like water flowing in a river. This is called current electricity. Amazing. So is this a circuit? Give them a closer look, AP. Let's first think about how batteries and electric currents work. One way to think about electricity is like water. Scientists call it the hydraulic or fluid system analogy. In this example, we can think of the battery as both a source of water and a water pump. When the battery is not in a circuit, the water or electrons don't have anywhere to go. But when we connect the battery to the circuit, it pushes the water to create a current. This push is called voltage. People have been taking advantage of currents to do work for a long time. Water wheels set in flowing rivers were used to power grain mills, which ground wheat into flour. Flowing electrons can also be used to do work for us, like turning on a light bulb. So in our example, adding in more batteries means we have more water and more water pumps. How do you think this will change how much light is made by our bulbs? Next, let's try the same process with a D battery and a piece of wire. At first, you can see it works exactly the same. But what happens if we start to stack more batteries on top? We have two batteries this time, so more power. I would start with the wire and somehow connecting it to the two bigger batteries. Try stacking them. That would probably work. We can use the tape and connect it. I don't think that's gonna work. It has to be a full circuit, like a circle. You hold the light and you put it on top. Try touching the wire to the light bulb. It's brighter. brighter. Right, the more batteries we add in the circuit, the brighter the bulb gets. Oh look, it's working. And it's even brighter than it was before. So one more battery gives it more power, and then two powers together make the light bulb burn brighter. Now you can see the bright idea behind how electrical circuits work. From your cell phones to your computers, semiconductors are an important part of the electrical circuits that power the devices all around you. Let's learn. Chip kids, you ready to learn? Let's go. What's good? What's up? I miss Pope. Chip kids, welcome.